Hello everybody, my name is Kotalon3639, welcome back to another video. Today in this one is going to be another deck profile video, and in this one we're going to be doing an updated Drytron deck profile post Lightning Vortex, and oh boy, Drytron is finally back. The new support they got is just absolutely fucking ridiculous. So yeah, uh, this can be post Lightning Overdrives. Uh, Lightning Overdrive gets released tomorrow as the time of recording this. Uh, but uh, OTS store should have them by today, but it officially gets released uh, tomorrow. So yeah, very, very interesting deck. I will post my original one in the uh, link in the description uh, down below. I don't know why you would want to watch that, however, because this is a way better version than what the last one is. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into the deck profile. We're starting off with three Alpha Thuban. This is not you know, original or anything. Everyone plays three Alpha Thuban because it's a ritual monster. Very, very good, especially with Ben 10 at one now. You're most likely searching your Ben 10 with uh, Alpha with this card. So yeah, or three Alpha without a doubt. Uh, next thing up, three Zeta searches you the ritual spell. If you don't know how Drytron works, so basically uh, you can uh, no, you can only spell some of these cards by a Drytron card effect, uh, and all the Drytron monsters have an effect where you contribute one other Drytron or ritual monster from your hand or field, special summon the card from hand or graveyard, and then it gains effect based on when they're special summoned. Alpha gets the ritual monsters, like I said, uh, but Zeta can search out the ritual spell, which is very, very good. Again, Zeta at three is not uncommon. Uh, yeah, a very, very uh, good card there. Uh, two Delta, as just uh, for your ratios here, if you don't know what Delta's effect does, uh, if this card is when this card is special summoned, reveal one uh, ritual monster or ritual spell, draw one card and then we're playing uh two gamma as well usually people play it at one but i'm playing it at two just to see more consistency with the deck i want to see names in the deck especially since mu beta needs two drytron monsters to go into and if you don't know what drytron uh gamma effect is is uh once he is special summon you can uh I spell summon another drytron monster from your uh graveyard so very 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 good card effect and that's it for the drytron monsters we're playing 10 in uh today's ratio so yeah very very good on to some fairies now. We're playing the three Herald of Orange Light. Uh, when your opponent activates the monster effect, quick effect, discard this card and another fairy card, and then negate the activation. And if you do, destroy the card. Very good. It's searchable off. A uh, card will cover in just a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, very much you're playing three of without a doubt. Now, on to the new card three Diviner of Herald. Oh boy, this card is so good. Now, if you don't know what it is, it's basically a Manju, and that's about it. But it's better than Manju, and you'll see why. So if this card is normal or special summon, you can send one fairy monster from your deck or extra deck to, uh, to your graveyard. And if you do, increase this card's level by that sent monster. So you're usually sending Herald of the Arclight. Uh, and then Herald of the Arclight effect is when you get sent to graveyard, you can add one ritual monster or ritual spell from your deck to your hand. So it's basically a Manju effect. So, But why is Diviner better than Manju. Well, Diviner is a level 2 fairy. That works because Ava can get its search off. Uh, Ava can search Diviner and then uh, Ultimus can use Diviner as one of its negation effects as well. And then it, it becomes a level 6 when you send Herald of the uh, 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 Herald of the Arclight to the graveyard. It becomes a level 6 and it can help you go into a Beatrice play, which we'll get into in the combo section. So yeah, very, very, very good card. Ridiculously expensive right now. It's like $85 right now. The last time I looked, which was like a couple hours ago. Uh, so yeah, uh, without a doubt, Diviner at 3 is going to be super important, but is a very expensive card. So, But it's very important. I would say you need to play it at 3. And then uh, 2 Ava. Uh, I'm playing 2 Ava because now we're playing the Beatrice in the... Uh, uh, extra deck as well, so you can send this uh, during your turn and your opponent's turn to get even more advantage and stuff like that. That's why I'm doing Ava. If you don't know Ava's effect, this card is sent to graveyard. You can banish up to two uh, other light fairy monsters from your field and or graveyard. Add the same number of level two lower light fairy monsters with different names from your deck to your hand. So you can end up searching Orange Light and Diviner of Heralds through Ava's effect. That is it for the effect monsters, however. Now let's get into the uh, ritual monsters. The Megaliths! A lot of people are probably taking out the Megalith package now since, you know, they have the Diviner and stuff like that. And it's probably a little bit more consistently that way if they take out the Megalith package. But I'm sticking with the Megalith package. And here's the reason why. Megalith Fool can reoccur your Ben 10 without, you know, needing to ritual summon the Ben 10 back out. 
So he can reoccur the Ben 10 and basically go into another Ben 10 search. And that's why Fool is so good. But you also have uh, Bethor, which is also just ridiculous as fuck. If you just have this card, you can add, actually, this is just good negation for back row. If you end up versing back row, there's no back row hate in the deck. So if you just end up versing the back row, uh, back row deck, Bethor could be really good against that uh, specific type of deck. So that's why I'm keeping the Megalith in here. Uh, I'm playing the Ophiel because the Ophiel can search out the Bethor and stuff like that and full can uh, summon out the Ophiel. It's going to be a little bit more bricky and I can see why people take it out. But I love the Megalith package just to reoccur Ben 10, get more searches with it. And then, you you know, get your Bethor plays and stuff like that. And then you even go into a higher link uh, and you get to a little bit of a better board as well. So yeah, very, very good card. Uh, very good cards. I'm playing the Megalith package still. So uh, now on to the fairy uh, uh, build here. We got Herald of Ultimus, your main negation monster for the entire deck. I'm sticking with uh, Ultimus because I'm not playing Preparation of Rights in here. As you can see, there's no Preparation of Rights in here. I completely took it out because there's just ways to get the Ritual Monsters out of the deck anyways. You don't really need Preparation of Rights. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm playing uh, Herald of Ultimus instead of like something like Herald of Perfection. Ultimus is a little better because it can actually negate special summons as well. So that's why I am playing the Herald of Ultimus. If you don't know, uh, you can uh, win a card or an opponent with a special summon a monster or activates a spell or trap card or monster effect. Send one fairy monster from your hand to graveyard. Negate the special summon or activation. And if you do, destroy the card. So very just generic negation. That's not once per turn. So very abusable. So yeah, that's why. We're playing the one Ben 10 because playing, you know, Ben 10 is still fucking ridiculous in this entire deck. Ben 10 is just super, super, super good. If you don't know, when this card is tributed, you can add uh, one light fairy monster from your deck to your hand. So it can end up being, you know, an Ultimus. It can be the Diviner of Herald. It can be the Orange Light. It can be Ava. Really, it's just up to you on what you want to search there. Uh, so yeah, Ben 10, very, very good. Like, you can recur multiple times through Fool's Effect or just Ritual Summoning it back out. I'm playing Idioton's effect as well, or just an Idioton. Uh, if you don't, if this card is tripping, you can add one ritual spell back from your hand. But or no, no, no. If it's ritual summon, add one ritual spell back to your hand. And then if it's tributed, all ritual monsters gain a thousand attack and defense. So why am I playing this in here? It's basically not that. It's just another tribute fodder. But it's more importantly, so Natasha is also live as well. Natasha is still a very, very good card, and I would still argue to play. It's just basically take a monster and stuff like that. Very, very good. If you don't know, you can target one. Uh, so it has multiple effects that the Drytrons use. Once per turn, target one face up a uh, monster you control, gain life points equal to half of its attack. That's good when it goes into time reasons and stuff like that. Then, when it, uh, uh, it's bottom effect. If this card's in your graveyard, you can banish one Cyber Angel monster from your graveyard, target one monster your opponent controls, spell summon this card, and if you do, Take control of that monster. Very, very good. No one's per turn to this effect, except for its top effect to gain life points for some reason. So, yeah, very, very interesting. Now, you do need to properly ritual summon it out to actually get its effect off. So, there's that and stuff. But, you know, still very good card to play with. But that is it for the monsters now. Let's get into the spells and traps. Playing three Forbidden Droplet in the main deck because... Forbidden Droplet is good, and if this deck ends up going second and he has to go against a really tough board, Forbidden Droplet can just kind of ease the tensions just a little bit. Very good card in Forbidden Droplet. Very not expensive anymore because it got announced that it's getting a reprint in Animation Chronicle, I think it is. So, very interesting. If you don't know, you can send any number of cards from your hand or field to the graveyard. Choose that many effect monsters, negate the effects until the end of the turn, and half their effects, uh, half their attack. As well, and then your opponent cannot respond to it except for so if you send like a monster or spell, they cannot respond to Forbidden Droplet with monsters and spells. So very good in Forbidden Droplet. We got three Drytron Nova to pull out uh, your Drytron monsters from the deck. Uh, just basically that's it. Just a special summon a Drytron from deck. Very good card. Uh, we're playing three Cyber Emergencies to search out the Drytrons now. This is still very interesting because a lot of people still want to play around Droll and Lockbird. I'm sorry. No matter what, if you have a hand that has to search out cards, you're going to get screwed by Droll and Lockbird. Droll and Lockbird still just ridiculously shuts down this deck. And that's unfortunate as well. Uh, I think you can play through it more now than it could back then. just really depends on what your hand is. Uh, but yeah, 3 Cyber Emergency without a doubt. 
uh, to Drytron Fafnir to either search out uh, Drytron Nova or the Ritual Spell, and also prevents, you know, negations against the Ritual Spell as well. So Fafnir, very, very good card. We're playing the one Ritual Spell because the Ritual Spell is searchable and don't really want to play it at two either. Uh, it, it, its effect is it's this, card, this card can uh, be used to Ritual Summon any Ritual Monster from your hand or graveyard, you must also treat machine monsters who on your hand or field whose total attack equal or, exce or exceed the attack of the ritual monster you ritual summon. And then if this card is in your graveyard, try target one dry trial monster, it loses a thousand attack and defense and add that card back to your hand. It has recoverability and stuff like that. That's just absolutely uh, ridiculous. Uh, we got Foolish Burial in here because you can send one of the Drytron monsters from your deck to graveyard and still get its effect off, so that's why we're playing the Foolish Burial. One called by to play around hand traps, and then the one instant fusion to also play around hand traps by summoning the uh, Millennium Eyes Restrict. So yeah, that is it for the main deck. Now let's get into the extra deck. We're playing two Herald of the Arclight, a new uh, card in here. Oh boy, this thing with Diviner is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so if you don't know, um, you can uh, it, top effect is good, and a lot of decks use that effect, but we can't pull it out properly, so there's... We're not going to be able to use the top effect, but we can use the Abano effect. Uh, um, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one ritual monster or ritual spell from your deck to your graveyard. So Diviner, like I said, you add Normal Summon Diviner, declare the effect, send Herald of Arclight, and then Herald of Arclight effect to add one ritual monster or ritual spell, depending on what you want to search out. Playing two of it, because if you just end up going into a grind match, you want to have more Herald of Arclight for, for Diviner not to be dead. We're playing Elder Entis Nitesh as well. It's just another fairy you can send off Diviner of Herald. If uh, A lot of people already know what Entis effect is, but if you don't know, if this card is sent from the uh, to the graveyard, target one card on the field, destroy it. You can only you, you can only spell someone, uh, or you can, yeah, basically that's it. If this card is sent to the graveyard, target one card on the field, destroy it. That's basically why it's in here, just a, as a destruction effect. If you're playing against Floodgates, it can help you out to destroy that Floodgate. We're playing the Millennium Eyes Restrict for the Instant Fusion. If you don't know the Millennium Eyes Restrict effect is uh, uh, when, once per turn when your opponent activates a monster effect, target one effect monster your opponent controls that is on the field or in their graveyard. Uh, equip that target to this card you control. That this card that this card gains attack equal to the uh, equal to the equipped monsters attack. Monsters with the equipped monsters name cannot act, attack. Also, their effects on field and their effects activated are. Negated, so it's basically just another like called by the grave kind of thing for Millennium Eyes Restrict. So this is another way to stop Droll and Lockbird. Now it can't stop Nibiru or Gamma, unfortunately, because those don't send to graveyard. So that's unfortunate, but you know what do you have to do? We're playing the one Link Rebo. Now getting into the Link Monsters, one Link Rebo because it's very easy to make. All the Drytrons are level ones. Playing IP Mascarena because you get that quick effect to Link Summon during your opponent's turn, either go into Unicorn or Appalooza, depending on what you end on kind of things. So IP, very good. Playing the Nightmare Phoenix and Nightmare Unicorn just has some generic Link monsters. Playing the Appalooza, which you can make very consistently in this deck. And then the one Boral Sword to kind of OTK your opponent. Now onto the XYZ monsters, Drytron, Mubeta, Fafnir. Oh, oh boy, this card is... It's fucking ridiculous. Holy shit, this card is fucking ridiculous. This card is a little bit more ridiculous than Diviner is. So what does Drytron Mu Beta Fafnir actually do? It requires two plus level ones to go into, which is not that hard because you do play a shit ton of Drytrons. If you would tribute a monster for a ritual summon, you can detach the appropriate materials from this card instead. That alone is fucking ridiculous. So you basically, if you activate the ritual spell, you can just detach a monster from the Dry Tribe you made up after to ritual summon. That's absolutely fucking ridiculous. As just, oh my god, that's so ridiculous. Then, if the card is XYZ summoned, you can send one Drytron card from your deck to the graveyard. That's also just ridiculous, because it's a foolish burial for your Drytron monsters. Very, very, very ridiculous effect as well. That's why I said when when Union Carry got banned, I didn't really mind that much, because Mubeta Fafnir was coming out, and basically, Mubeta Fafnir is the better Union Carrier for the deck. Very, very good. Also has a bottom effect when your opponent activates a spell or trap card while you control a machine ritual monster. Quick effect, detach one material from this card, negate the activation, and if you do destroy it, we're not playing any machine ritual monsters in the entire deck, so that effect doesn't really get used right now. So there's that. Uh, Drytron Mubeta Fafnir, absolutely ridiculous. You can probably play it at two of, I'm just playing it as a one of for now. 
The one Beatrice, Lady of the Internal. Oh boy, this card is going to get ridiculous now. So the only effect that matters with Beatrice is uh, once per turn, quick effect, detach one material from this card, send one card from your deck to the graveyard. That's the only effect we use in the entire uh, Beatrice's effect. So you would usually send Ava off the effect and Ava effect, you know, banish to get two fairies. That's why you play Beatrice. And it's very easy to make Beatrice because Diviner makes itself a level 6. Fool can make itself a level 6. Ben 10 and Idiotons are also level 6 as well if you want to go down on that route. So Beatrice is very easy to make and stuff like that. And then we're playing the Layerless Assembled Nightingale package to go into your downer and then go into a Zeus package because Zeus is just absolutely ridiculous. It probably should be a card that should probably be banned or something like that because this card is just absolutely fucking ridiculous. But yeah, that is it for the entire deck. The side deck, I'm playing three Nib, three Lancia, three Droll, three Twin Twisters, a Harpy's Feather Duster, a Red Reboot, and honestly, I'm going to, for that last uh, card in my side deck, I'm going to be playing one more uh, Dry Tron Ritual spell. Forgot to add it in. Uh, I'm a fucking idiot, but that's what that 15th card will be, is the Dry Tron Ritual spell. Just as a second one, uh, so when you go like second or go into match two, game two and game three, uh, once they start signing in their banished cards, you can actually just add the Ritual spell to uh, the second one to your uh, deck. So yeah, that is it for the entire main deck. Now let's get into some combos. Now this is a typical hand you might see in the Drytron deck. Now this is actually just a ridiculous effect or, or hand. So we're uh, versing no one because it's just to show you what the deck can do. And we're also playing against no negations kind of thing. So first things first, we're gonna actually activate Cyber Emergency here to search out our alpha. Uh, if it lets me, uh, where is Alpha? Add Alpha to him. And we'll go ahead and do Alpha Tribute uh, Delta. Yeah, we'll Tribute Delta. Summon the Alpha, then Alpha Effect. We'll go ahead and add ourselves the Ben 10 to him. Uh, here, we'll add the Ben. Uh, a little bit of lag there. We'll, then we'll go Delta's Effect. Tribute off the Ben 10. Summon the Delta here. And then uh, uh, Delta's Effect. We'll reveal the full. Um, just reveal that full to draw the one card. And we draw another Diviner. Well, now we have Hand Trap. Uh, if they have Nibiru, we have Orange Light. So that's actually not that much of a problem here. Uh, we'll go ahead and do Ben 10's effect now. We'll go ahead and actually just search out a... Uh, huh. Very interesting. I could search out an Ava. Ava would be very good here. Yeah, we'll just search... Ava or Ultimus is honestly up to you. We're just going to end up searching e Ava here. Uh, so if we get, uh, you know, if we do get in a beard or something, you have orange like Ava, then, you know, have follow-up play after that. Then we'll go ahead and Noel summon the Diviner of Herald. We'll declare the effect, uh, then go into uh, send Arclight to Graveyard. And Arclight effect, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and search ourselves. Uh, we'll actually just search ourselves at Herald of Ultimus here. And then we'll go into an overlay here, go into a Drytron Mubeta Fafnir. Then we'll declare the effect of Drytron Mubeta Fafnir to Foolish Burial. A Drytron monster will end up Foolish Bearing a Zeta here, because we do need that effect. Then we'll go Zeta Tribute Full to summon out the Zeta. And then Zeta Effect to go ahead and Ritual to pull out the Ritual spell from deck here. Where is that Ritual spell at? There it is. And then we'll go ahead and activate the Ritual spell here. We'll send, uh, we'll actually just send Zeta, special summon the uh, ultimate. We don't really, really need to send Zeta there. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to actually detach here. We'll detach Alpha. My bad, kind of messed up there. Uh, we'll just actually just detach instead here. We'll keep the Zeta on field. Then we'll actually go ahead and do the Rituals uh, effect here. Target Drytron me Beta Fafnir. Um, we bat Fafnir will lose a thousand attack, but the material under it is still at two thousand. Very fucking ridiculous. Then we'll go ahead and activate the effect. Go into a uh, detach again. Go into full full effect uh, here. Add Ben Ten back to hand, and then we'll go ahead and link off Zeta. Go into a uh, link Karibo here, and then we'll go full effect. Tribute the Ben Ten. Uh, summon out Ophiel. And then we'll go Ben 10, Chain Link 1, Ophiel, Chain Link 2. Uh, so we add Ophiel first uh, and Bethor, and then Ben 10 effect. We have options for Ben 10 effect here. Uh, we have a lot of options here. Uh, we'll just, honestly, just add Natasha, I guess. Really don't need to search anything else out here. 
So now, Fool is a level 6 because it added Ben 10, and then Diviner is a level 6 because it sent uh, Diviner of, or it sent Herald of the Arclight. We'll go into an overlay, go into a, where the hell is it? Beatrice here. And then we'll have to declare the effect of Beatrice, detach the, uh, the Diviner. We'll go ahead and send Ava, wherever Ava is. Send Ava, and then Ava's effect here will banish uh, ourselves a Diviner and uh, Herald of the Arc Light, and then uh, add ourselves another Orange Light and another Diviner here. Orange Light, and where is Diviner at? Uh, there it is. Add Diviner of the Herald. A lot of shit ton of hand advantage here. And then we'll actually go into, let's see, man, this is really, really tough now. Go ahead and do, we can go into Apo here, and that would be good, I would think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. We'll go ahead and do an Appalooza play here, uh, sending uh, the four I just sent. Go into a four material Appalooza here. And that's basically the end of your combo now. Very ridiculous end board. You have four negations with Appalooza. You end up for El Herald of Ultimus, a one, two, three, four, five, six negations with Herald of Ultimus, plus Ava, so you get one more search, unfortunately, because we only have one air orange light left. So, yeah, very, very ridiculous. And if they end up, you know, forbidden drop lately or anything like that, you still have technically three air Herald of Orange Lights left because you do have the last one in deck you can search off ava's effect so uh yeah you still have that three monster negations if any if everything ends up getting negation uh, negated anyways you still have the herald of orange lights in your hand so yeah that is the combo i hope you guys did enjoy the video if you did leave a like and subscribe for more content on the channel i do upload every single day except for saturday and sunday i hope to see you guys in the next one goodbye